Okay, good evening, everyone. Welcome to our uh, September 12th Waynesboro Area School District Board uh, meeting for Board of Directors. Please stand. Cite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, let's start tonight's so meeting off with the uh, roll call. Ms. Miles? Here. Ms. Zimmerman? Here. Ms. Harold? Here. Ms. Strait? Mr. Marvin? Here. Ms. Sullivan? Here. Dr. Royer? Here. Ms. Courtney? Here. Mr. Smith? Here. Okay, all right, thank you. And do we have a motion for approval of the agenda for tonight? Move to approve the agenda. Second. Question. Are we adding that adding that one item? It's yes. Uh, we're is that already changed? Right, it's changed. Okay. Yep. Sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at it. That's why I was okay. Yep, it's it's changed due okay. to, to the board report. Okay. Uh all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Um approval of minutes from our last meeting. Do we have a motion? Approve the minutes from our last meeting. Okay. Um, so motion to for approval of minutes from our last meeting. Is there a motion? Move to approve the minutes. Second. Okay. Questions or all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. And now we move down to our superintendent's report. Dr. Thank you, Mr. Smith. So we're, um, I guess, in week three. Um, and I'm pleased to report that um, administratively, as well as um, some comments from teachers and support staff, we are off to an excellent start. Um, tomorrow, uh, the Waynesbury School District will be hosting a family community night at the senior high school beginning at six o'clock. Uh, we have um, several agencies uh, will be present as well as uh, four guest speakers. And it's primarily in response to um, some, you know, community parent concerns regarding um, access to mental health agencies, career options. So it's an overall evening to um, hopefully provide some great resources to our parents. So uh, welcome everyone to attend that tomorrow evening beginning at six o'clock at Wash's. Um, we uh, are hosting or we will have the facilities committee meeting on um, September 19th beginning at 5.30 here. Um, at um, Clayton Avenue. I know earlier last spring, um, there were um, some concerns um, uh, voice, uh, regarding accessibility in our buildings. And so we were able to follow up um, over the course of the summer uh, with an architect uh, that has, um, has essentially reviewed the buildings and has some recommendations. So, um, and anyone obviously from the board perspective, the community perspective that's interested in the accessibility issue uh, regarding our buildings, they're welcome to attend that meeting. Um, also Friday night, we have a uh, football game uh, with lots of fun activities uh, scheduled um, with an ending again with uh, the fireworks. So uh, super excited. Um, I think again, we're off to a great start and I wanna thank all the, uh, the admin, um, teachers, um, support staff for everything they did. Uh, it shows that we've prepared well over the course of the summer and thank you for the board support as well. Thank you. And now that school has started, the honeymoon is over. Yes. <laughs> honeymoon is over, yes. Okay, uh, moving down to public, no public comment this evening. And have student board report. All right, welcome back, Mary. <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Are we looking for an assistant for Mary? Yeah, just I forget when that happened. I was just curious. Okay. Oh, okay. Very good. Thanks. Thanks, Mary. Uh, we move down to board reports and let's start with policy committee. Anything you want to share? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, the policy committee meeting uh, met on the 7th. Um, we started, um, we finished up policy to this and foster care, which is on the agenda tonight for being board policy. To um, that policy basically um, makes some changes based on the law from, from PSBA and also uh, makes it much clearer. Um, defines the procedure. And we also uh, started on the curriculum policies, 105 curriculum, 105.1 .1 curriculum review, 108 textbooks, option of textbooks, and 109 resources. And we had some good discussion. Those, uh, Dr. DeShong's been doing. And um, we'll be following up those on next meeting. We'll be still about those policies. That meeting is October 5th from. Okay. Right. Uh, academic committee. Anything you want to share? Anyone? Academic committee meets next Tuesday at 2 p.m. Correct. Okay. That'll be our first meeting of the year. Okay. And facilities meeting, as Dr. Sternerheim said, is on Tuesday, September the 19th. Anybody from that want to add anything, James? Or no, um, but uh, a lot of projects have wrapped up from the summer, so kind of reviewing that. Um, and then, obviously, as Dr. Serna Hine, some of the accessibility uh, within our buildings. Um, and then I think just as a general note, I know questions have been asked about the South Bridge. Uh, we're very thankful for the local contractor that's doing work. Um, and so the goal is uh, end of September uh, for the South Bridge. Obviously, if they get it done, we won't say no. Uh, we'll take it uh, as soon as they're ready for us, but good news on, on that front. Okay. Thank you. All right, um, budget. Anything and then budget? budget will have our first meeting of the year, uh, October 9th, and it will be here at Clayton Ave in this room. Thank you. And I failed to mention that prior to our meeting, the beginning of the meeting, we did have an executive session to discuss student waiver and personnel issues. Move down to our first action item, that is student waiver. Do we have a motion to approve the student waiver as discussed in executive session? Move to approve. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Please. <clears throat> Okay, we move down to personnel. Dr. Deschamps. Good evening, Mr. Smith and everyone. Uh, we have a, a six resignations of support staff uh, that we're asking you to approve. We want to thank those folks uh, for their service, for the time that uh, uh, they were here and the roles that they performed. So we appreciate that. Uh, we have 11 reassignments or change in hours of support staff that you will see that listed there. I won't name them all off, but there are 11 of them. And then we have eight appointments for support staff, um, which are also listed there, a number of paraprofessional positions. And we do appreciate our paraprofessionals. Uh, we, I think we want to uh, emphasize that very much. I was out at uh, Maori today and saw some of them in action and some of them last week in action. And uh, they are an important part of uh, the process in supporting students and uh, teachers. So uh, we do really greatly appreciate them. Um, we also have uh, a number of appointments for extracurricular staff, one of them being uh, our Twilight Coordinator folks and teachers, which have just kind of kicked up here. Uh, that's for uh, some students who need some supports in the evenings, um, and we appreciate uh, your approval for those uh, folks. Um, and then uh, last but not least, uh, we have a, a professional staff. Uh, we are asking you to, uh, Erica Schaefer out at Maori as a special education teacher. 
uh, I think she, upon approval, uh, she officially begins uh, tomorrow out there. <laughs> she did come to induction uh, on Monday, and uh, we appreciate her coming to do that. So, and one other one was a, uh, uh, a request for leave. So, okay. thank you. Is there a motion to approve the personnel as listed? Move to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, next, van and bus bus drivers. Dr. Holtzman. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. So we have some adjustments, and we see this throughout the school year. We have adjustments for our drivers on the list here. Um, the ones that we're approving have, uh, of course, met the qualifications and requirements for driving students in the district. So we're asking for approval. Okay. Motion to approve van bus drivers as listed. Move Motion. to approve. Second. Any questions, comments? All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Okay, so now uh, this is the first reading of policy 251 and policy 105.1. Is that Dr. Roy? Who's leading this? Mm -hmm. I don't believe 105.1 is this. It is? It's a first reading? Okay, I first reading. It. Okay, yes, it is. I'm, I apologize. Okay. Um, yeah, 105.1 was just a change of a title. Um, taking out uh, students uh, because it is students over 18, but the title before just said and students led you to believe that any student of any age so could review. Um, and the other one again is like this is the clarifies language between. <laughs> I have a question, which I'm sure of the answer, but I'll ask. So Obviously, the uh, uh, one of uh, yeah, one of five point one. That's all legally uh, supported. Correct. Okay. That's it, it's our current policy. Okay. Yeah. The, the issue on the other policies that we're we're getting into is is um, you know what are considered curriculum resources and what are considered teacher resources because it's a different world than it was before. Right. Right. Um, so we're trying to come to you know. And resolution of that. And, and interesting enough, Ms. Harold, there's wordsmithing that goes into some of these policies. Obviously, there's the legalese piece of it, but then as we sit down and look at our policies as compared to other district policies, sometimes there is like the local, some local decisions that you would want to add in there. But again, making sure that we're falling under like yep. the, the, the right legality of it all or whatever. So. Yeah, any policy that we make any significant changes, we send to, to um, the SBA to review. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Was there a change to the, like the homelessness that they, was it? Oh, there's some significant changes. In there. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, that's, it's a, actually a replacement policy um, because it just didn't make sense. There were so many. Um, I wouldn't say that it's anything like major. It's just more descriptive and it's much more easy or easy to understand and have to understand. Um, you know, we have a big responsibility on the students and foster care. Uh, there's a lot involved. All right. Any other questions for Dr. Roy? Move to um, the Federal Adult Education Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, Title II. Who is responsible? That, that would be me. I, I, so essentially, it's it's the annual agreement we have with the LIU uh, for us to be able to provide the GED program here in the Waynesbury School District. So the recommendation is to uh, approve the agreement um, for the school year. Okay. Yes. Second. Second. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. 
Next, we move to the early learning coordinator, MOU. Uh, that would be me. Um, so as I explained um, in uh, the personnel committee meeting, uh, we have um, our early learning coordinator um, is on uh, leave at this point. And so essentially what we're looking is to uh, utilize two of our existing staff um, each taking separate roles and responsibilities in order to essentially continue the, you know, the the position um, outside of their school day. So it's a separate MOU that we have um, drafted with the the association uh, to essentially honor those um, individuals their work time and to be able to um, keep the program up and running during uh, Dr. Vincent Ondeco's leave. Okay. So is there a motion to approve the uh, early learning coordinator MOU? Second. Questions? Comments? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Now the cyber learning MOU. Okay, so this particular MOU has been brought to the board several times um, prior as a result of COVID. At this time, we do not have um, a teacher engaging in cyber learning or teaching cyber program um, in this particular modality. However, I wanted the MOU approved um, in anticipation if there is a, a student that would need these services. On the past, uh, we have utilized this with special education students as a way to honor their IEP. Uh, so at this point, um, it is an MOU that I'd like to have in the works or, or established to be able to use if necessary. Uh, if we essentially elect to use it this year uh, for a particular student, I will make the board aware in, in advance. Okay. Your motion to approve the cyber learning MOU. Move to approve. Second. Questions? Um, why, why is this for a five-year period? It's not, it's, it's, that's just the, the, the duration of the collective bargaining unit. Is that where you're looking at 2026? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the bar. That's that's the duration of the CBA. Okay, so what's the duration of this agreement? Just one year. One year. Okay. One year. Yeah. Where's that? Like, I didn't see that statement. The first the day, I think, in uh, hmm. sections ten and eleven. Okay, so, end of the 23, yeah. 24 school year to meet and determine if any changes need to be made. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's been renewed every year. But uh, yeah, it, that just uh, the way from a legal perspective, they they I think announced gotcha. this is the, the gotcha. duration of the CBA. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? All right. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, any opposed? Okay. Now we move down to uh, job description for director of maintenance and transportation. Okay. Yeah, sorry, I think I can use that. That's all right. Um, so we've updated the um, position here for the director of maintenance and transportation. Right now, that is an outsourced position. We have that through a contract. And so this would update the actual job to include both maintenance and transportation. So we went through and we uh, updated uh, what that job description would look like going down through here. Um, you know, if the board goes down, you know, if the board approves this agreement, then we would go ahead and, or job description, I should say, we would go out and then go ahead and post for the position. Okay, so is there a motion to approve the job description for maintenance and transportation director? Move to approve. Second. Second. <laughs> okay, any questions? I, I have for a Dr. question. Yes. I do too. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm connecting this with the next item. So if this is approved and we could move in this direction, how does that impact the contract? current maintenance director? Sure. Great question. Thank you, Ms. Harold. So um, that agreement um, with that individual, of course, we have an agreement with PASBO who has an agreement with the individual, right. but obviously we're working together on these. Um, that person's agreed that they would go ahead and certainly stay here for at least another six months. Okay. And so that agreement is actually a six month agreement. Yeah, I looked on, I couldn't yeah. find the length on that. That's all right. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, but it's, it's for six months. Okay. There. And so the idea is um, obviously we need time to go out and post to find the right person. And then even once we bring that person on board, certainly, you know, Mr. Adams, I would say um, in the meeting here is that extremely knowledgeable about the district and the positions. And I think he'd be a good uh, kind of mentor to help get that person up on board with the district and stuff. Thank you. You're welcome. No, yes. Um, yeah, I just, I just have two things that, you know, perhaps maybe we could consider adding. Um, first of all, I think there should be something on here about this person being on call. 
um, when there's community events. Um, and I don't know how you would rate that, but like community concerts, we've had issues where, you know, things weren't, bathrooms weren't open, um, you know, air conditioning wasn't on, um, you know, that type of thing. I don't know, I don't know what the current call system is for that. Um, also, I believe, and I don't know what that list would look like, but at the very minimum, I, I would like to see someone that's in charge of facilities be at graduation. Um, you know, we had an issue that, you know, trash cans weren't emptied. You know, I think that that person, again, I would make a much longer list if, if I was in charge. Um, but I think at the very least, they should be at like graduation in any major, um, you know, any major events. You could just leave it that it could say as directed or whatever. I, I mean, I agree with you. It's certainly something we could put into there and add that as an additional portal point. And that's just my opinion. Mm -hmm. But. Well, I think it's probably good just to clarify because those events are very important and sometimes just being there in an extra set of eyes on some issues or concerns. So does that mean we're going to vote on like, this? Right, or because, yeah, there was a... We're going to change it. Yeah. We'll call it a friendly amendment. Yeah. Like, vote on it as is provided that and we'll Wording is updated to as directed for major events. If you guys are in agreement with that, you know, fine with is that. that the only thing I want, I okay. want to hold off the process. Just no, I appreciate that. And we okay. can share that back out before it actually officially goes back out to make sure we hit mm -hmm. hit the spot. So, so the motion, um, no, actually, so go back to the motion is is to approve the job description, uh, including um, the addition of. Um, on call for um, important or significant um, county events or school events, district events. Okay, so all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, thank you. And now I wait. Okay. Change the motion on me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay, I'm good. Okay. Thank you. Uh huh. So let's move down to uh, PS PASBO agreement with maintenance director. Dr. Osman again. Okay, yes, sir. So this is an extenuation of the existing agreement. I think I want to say this is starting our third year, but if you told me it was the fourth year, it's been. A couple of years that we've had this in place. Um, so this is an agreement that we have with PASBO, who in turn has an agreement with Mr. Adams in this case um, to provide these services. Um, we're basically recommending to go in and continue that for another six months. Um, there's a small change in the uh, pricing there, but that's reflective of the same increase that we had the previous year, the same uh, incremental amount on that as well. Uh, but no other changes to it other than that. Your motion to approve the PASBO agreement. Um, anyone? Move to approve. Second. Questions? I'm sorry, Mr. Ross. The time of this is for what period of time? Uh, for six it's months starting. Administrative content. I didn't see it either. I looked in the contract. If you scroll down, you'll see administrative. You the recommendation. Who's on the motion? Okay. So start backtrack September 23rd, six months from then. Uh, from from September 10th, actually, so two days ago. Yeah, unfortunately, the other one ran out just before we had a chance to get this one back in front of the board. Top of page two of the contract is where it has the six month term date. Thank you, Ms. Moore. It'd be nice if these contracts just had it very clear start date, <laughs> end date. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point Thank to take. I agree. Yeah, it yeah, would make it would make it easier a little bit, wouldn't it? Yeah. It's the same yeah. place for everyone, right? <laughs> it's a or at least put that in the in the in the comment section so that it's very visible and easy to see. Uh, it's a good takeaway. Thank you. Okay, so we do vote. All those in favor? Do we do? No, we didn't do that yet. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, and so we move down to the LIU Intra School Agreement with Health Center. 
That goes one again. One. I, I can't. It depends on. You can take it. <laughs> <laughs> I support it, but you can take it. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. That. <laughs> uh, so this is the agreement. We had initially had this on a previous board agenda, but um, our solicitor had wanted to go back through and review it. Um, they're rather lengthy documents. Um, through that process, he had a couple questions and concerns. We went back to um, to the IU with those questions and concerns, and they were able to make the changes that were satisfactory to the solicitor through that process, either answering the questions or changing a little bit of the language in the agreement. It was more just to make sure there was some clarifying items. So, for example, um, you know, if there was a change in cost, we would have to be notified before there's a change in cost and things of that nature. Um, uh, clarifying exactly how long we have to give notification, which would be one year, you'd have to give notification. So even though it's a five-year agreement, if you give them one year's notice, then you could go ahead and get out of the agreement at that point. Um, and there were some other small items in there, and I there was a small list there from the solicitor to review, but um, he had went back through there. Um, this is the, if I can, I can just step back for a quick second. This is the proposal of putting in the health center over, um, it would be over in the Greencastle area shared by the IU and Waynesboro. Um, they're putting it there because of the pricing and the location. Their goal, I think, ultimately is to try to increase participation within Franklin County itself. Um, we had a proposal um, with just the IU and Waynesboro sharing the facility. Uh, they're estimating a savings. Now, this is over five years. So think about this being spread out over five years of about $960,000. Um, there's a slight loss in year one because there's some upfront costs we have to put into it in year one, but then you start seeing savings in year two and moving forward. Um, you know, for comparison purposes, our medical costs right now are closer to $7 million a year. So, um, you know, when we say that there's a savings of, you know, go down a couple of years into the road, two or $300,000, it is a savings, but as a percentage of your total medical costs, it's not a significant amount. We're not expecting to see monumental savings compared to our actual costs, but the idea is that we would receive some savings as well as provide an additional benefit at the same time. Okay. Just, just, yeah, motion. Oh, we can do a motion. We can, and well, that question. But just to yeah. backtrack, I feel I feel like I'm a little shaky in my memory, memory here. This is a long time ago we started talking about this, right? We did. We we probably started, Dr. Ward, maybe two years ago or so. Okay. We started really talking about this quite a long time ago. Um, and then we started talking about probably uh, more actively in the last year to year and a half. So was it always the IU that was doing this? It was. It was always okay. the IU. As far as my memory is okay. with this with this. And process. who, what districts are involved? It was just us in the IU at this stage. Just in who? Uh, just Waynesboro okay. and the IU at this stage. So there was talk with other districts at the time. And if those districts had participated, the savings would have went up a little bit more than what we have right, right on here. But um, even without that, the savings, they still went through the process. They believe there's still savings with that process. Yeah. Maybe a, 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 a silly question, but why would we have, if we are the only district, why would we have the clinic in Greencastle and not Waynesboro? It's a good question. I think they were looking at it for a couple of reasons. One is they had a facility over there that was an urgent care facility at one point. And so the retro cost to go ahead and kind of revamp that to make it another, um, out, this is not an urgent care, but to make it a health center, the costs were pretty minimal to do that compared to other locations. Um, the other factor was that the, I believe the cost of the rent of that facility is relatively low because a foundation owns the building. Um, the third item was probably because they're really trying to expand this and incorporate several other districts at the end of the day. So I while Greencastle is a little more central, if we yeah. can talk Tuscarora. Right, originally Greencastle and Tuscarora were, were involved in this process. Right. So the so idea the was, question is, why yeah. are they out? Um, that's a good question. I don't have the answer for those questions, unfortunately. I don't have anything that I could tangibly come out and say that, you know, why those districts made that decision. I, I, like, I hear what you're saying, sure. Eric. Yeah. It just, it just to me, like, you know, when you say that, you know, we're offering a service for, you know, our staff in Greencastle. That just it just doesn't make sense to me. I mean, right. Location-wise, it's not certainly ideal. But again, the idea is the premise that hopefully the other districts will eventually look at this process and join with the IU. And then obviously it becomes more of a central with multiple districts. But um, at that point, it will probably be more difficult. If it was located here, it probably would be more difficult to convince other districts to participate in this part of the county versus more towards the middle of the county. So I'm, I'm going to make an assumption. I mean, I know this was Dr. Klein's thing when it started. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to make an assumption that the fact that it's on the agenda, it, it means that, you know, administration's su superintendents support it and you support it. I do. I mean, I can speak for myself. I do just because I think two reasons. One is um, it does provide a benefit for our employees and potentially a nice decent amount of savings. 
I would even say if the savings is half of this amount, it's still a savings okay. to us a little bit from a medical perspective. Um, again, ideally having it, you know, 10 miles away is not perfect. Um, but I think that would be the challenge. If it's here, it will be harder to grow that for the other districts as well. I think the assumption also is not everyone lives here in Waynesboro. So I could live in Greencastle. I could live in Chambersburg. I could be leaving here and driving. Like it's it's centrally located in the fact that it's right off of 81. Got it. Okay. And yeah. um, I, I guess from that, yeah. yeah. So like I, I thought the same thing. Like why not have it here in Waynesboro, but not, and so if I live in Chambersburg and, and I think the benefit is, and I know we had the presentation mm -hmm. here. So from a cost perspective, I'm I might be driving 10 miles to go to this urgent care, but the difference is. Oh, okay. And you bring up a good point, Dr. Shernine. So from an employee's perspective, I guess part of the care is not only do you have this nice resource here as a health center um, that's open, but also there's no co-payments for this. Okay. So they don't have co-pays or costs, and they also do not have costs for their lab work and things of that nature. And then they also have prescriptions. There's generic prescriptions that are available there, again, at no cost for that person and their family. So th there is some benefits to them for making that drive at this point. Have we gauged any interest from the teachers on this? Um, we did survey employees. It's probably been a year and a half since we surveyed them, but we did um, have a survey done by uh, the company here. Um, they went through and looked at, you know, favorability, how much will they use it? Um, I'd have to probably go back out to give you those okay. specifically, but but correct. We did go through that process, even to the point of how far do people typically travel to go for their health care? Yeah, I remember that. It's been yeah. A while. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it has been a while, though. It's probably been at least a year. And are they going to have evening hours? Um, they have not Late been set in stone yet. I yeah, they have not been set in stone yet, and I'm trying to see if I had what the other facilities. Um, not that, that was the original. I thought like it was at least. Later yeah, the other facilities do have later afternoon and evening hours. They have a facility in New Oxford and one in York. The one in New Oxford is open till five thirty several days. Yeah, I think two of the days. I remember from your yeah. presentation that if they kind of get a baseline, if they feel like more people are coming at a certain time, right. then they kind of adjust their hours. They can't. What I heard they can't that. adjust them. And and again, not that you know we talk about driving distances. Should any of our employees have a need or desire, they could also even go to the uh, uh, New Oxford facility as well in this process. Again, it would also be covered and included in here. So should somebody live in Adams County and they feel that's closer or you know, it, again, for many different reasons, they could go to one of those facilities, even though so they're- Is perfect. this something specific to our LIU or is this something initiative across the state through other IUs? I think you think it's a weird thing the IU is doing this. But. Yeah, I, I can't remember the answer to that. I, they've been talking about this. At, I can tell you from the IU's perspective, they, they held some initial meetings at least a decade ago talking about this idea. Sure. Um, and then it, eventually, I don't think it, you know, it was a discussion item at one point um, and then uh, probably about three years ago, I guess, or so, the uh, the IU decided to go ahead and bring this back up on the table. And again, they started, they have they have a facility in uh, York and they have one in Adams County. And this would help them as well, of course, because they see that as a value add for their employees here that live in Franklin County. Uh, my two cents on this is I think it's risky. Um, I don't see people driving 10 miles away. Again, I know people, not everybody lives here. Another issue, some of the things that you've brought up, the hours, I think, is a problem. The fact that there's, it's not a doctor that's running this, right? It's a, a family nurse or somebody. Yep. Um, the financial aspect, uh, I mean, we pretty much know we'll lose out from the beginning. Will it pick up? Who knows? And then another question Dr. Roy brought up about why aren't these other districts getting involved in it? So I just have too many concerns myself. I mean, I might be wrong down the road. You save $900,000, good, you know, but I I just don't see it happening. I mean, I'm not sure I would drive 10 miles. I hope I have urgent care right here. I know it cost me 20 bucks or whatever. What is it, 25? What's a copay? Whatever they're paying. But I, I just I just don't think they're going to go. That's just my thought. My, I, um, my understanding from the presentation was that depending upon usage, hours would be increased. If usage, right, if, if we exceed a certain percentage, and I can't remember what that number is, I want to say more than 50%, but don't hold me to that. But if we exceed a certain percentage of usage, then they will increase the number of hours and go from 20 to 40. Now, there would be an, an additional small cost, an incremental cost per month per contract under that scenario, but they would expand those hours as well, which is a benefit then. And again, more use of that facility, because again, this is outside of insurance completely, so we're not paying an additional cost to the insurance side. My concern is the fact that it's only Waynesboro. 
uh, LIU too, but, um, and if Greencastle and, you know, Mercersburg, Tuscarora or whatever would also be involved in this, then I can see more usage and broader hours, which I think would be much better for for our, our employees. I, I I just see really limited hours. And you say New Oxford is open until 5.30. Well, if I'm working here <laughs> and I'm waiting for my elementary school kid to get out of school, it's going to be tight to get to New Oxford. Plus, do I really want to drive that far? I'm not, but not Greencastle. Greencastle. Green I don't no, think so. no, to no, get no, to no. the later I, hours. Oh, to say later, later hours. hours. Greencastle doesn't have those hours. Yeah. And, you know, plus, I don't think 5.30 is that late. <laughs> right. And, and again, they have not determined the hours yet for the Greencastle facility. I, I was giving you kind of some hours for New Oxford that they have that were a little bit later in the evening. Um, interestingly enough, the York campus, and again, maybe a different model over there for what works for them. The latest they're open is actually 4.30 in York. So I don't know why that works better for them over there or why they feel that that's a better setup. But Well, I, I don't remember, you know, the details, but the clinic that we had set up here, that wasn't utilized for, I mean, COVID hit, I, I get that, but that wasn't really utilized for, for, that we had for the staff. No, in fact, I, I, once we started to see COVID and it, it just, I think the usage did drop significantly for that facility. It did. But I'm not sure it ever was highly used. Yeah. They have difficulty staffing it though. It was a little bit of both, I would say. Like it's, yeah. Uh, there were some challenges the exact in that same situation. situation. That was well span, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. That was well span. So that was like through the normal insurance. So you would go there like you would any other type of a right. uh, physician's visits same. or a nurse right. visits. Right. Yeah. But you're mm -hmm. correct. It was not really heavily utilized. I had three or four kids and I could take them up there and not have any copays. That might be worth a 10 minute drive to Greencastle. I don't know. I mean, if medical hours, expenses are not hours. going <laughs> down. <laughs> that, that's, yeah, that's I think one of the things, medical expenses, expenses are not going to go down. Um, and so I think any way we can add benefit to our teachers and to our staff, I think is probably something maybe at least to pursue initially, like this is not in perpetuity um, in agreement. So, you know, I, I think, you know, while yes, there is a loss at the beginning, I think the potential savings, not only for a district, but, you know, for a family with multiple children, as someone with multiple children, <laughs> um, you know, taking them where they can all be seen, getting prescriptions, um, things like that is not insignificant. So, you know, I, I, this is a benefit, I think, for our teachers in an environment where health costs are continuing to rise. Um, and so I think anything anything ad we can do for teachers, I think, is a, and, and staff, I think, is a good ad. I haven't heard of anything, right, really, to, like, discount any of this stuff other than some of these programs where they require you to, the staff to, um, you know, make a solemn promise to, you know, they're going to do this amount of exercise, whatever, some sort of gimmicky type of thing, but you're not talking about saving a significant amount of money. So I don't know. I'm kind of like you, anything that drive down healthcare costs. So Dr. Holtzman, if we would pursue this, like, and it, it's working and it's working well at, at, at what point is Greencastle just allowed to join or Tuscarora just, I mean. Correct. They would be allowed to join. Okay. So, and what they do is they have to also pay an upfront cost as part of like this build out cost. So they're not getting a free ride because somebody else started that process ahead of time. Uh, the way the model's set up, they would have to still pay the same upfront cost that we have to pay when you move forward with it. Which is how much? It was three months worth, I believe. Uh, three months worth. Let me try to find that here real quick for you. Uh, the startup fee was sixty-four thousand dollars. So lots of risk. We don't have a whole lot of money. We're not going to have a whole lot. We have had a whole lot of money, but we're not going to have a whole lot of money. And the commitment is how long, Dr. Holtzman? Five years. The agreement is five years, but as long as we give one year notice, we can pull out of so for one year. That's so, a lot of so you know, again, hypothetically, let and you're right. right you're right. Two so, years. So, yeah. yeah. But, but right. If at the end of a year or at the end of two years, if you decided that you know this is not something we want to continue with, you have to give that one year's notice, and then you would be out. Well, that's at least one hundred twenty-eight thousand dollars.
I mean, we don't know the save. We don't know, you know, we don't know what that's going to be. We don't know who's going. We don't know for what reasons. I just think it's weird that it's in Greencastle and Greencastle backed out. You know, I just. Yeah. And again, I I think one of the issues, and again, I can't speak for Greencastle because I, you know, they, they have their own um, decision process for that. But what I, I guess anecdotally, one of my observations was, I think they had just finished their contract negotiations and they had made some significant changes on the spousal side, if I remember correctly. Um, they could probably tell us if I'm making that statement incorrectly, but I think they, through their negotiations process, I don't believe spouses are on their insurance plans anymore if they have any other insurance available. Um, and so I think that changed their dynamic a lot. I think that agreement ended at the same time these conversations were starting. So um, I don't know if it was just too early on that they didn't want to make any other changes to their agreements and to their process at that point. Uh, any other questions or comments? Okay, so the motion is to approve the um, inter-school agreement with LIU for a health center. Is there a motion? So are you asking for a motion? Yes. Is there I'll a motion? move. Okay. Second. I'll second. I'm still looking for a second. I'm sorry. Okay. Second. All right. Any other questions or comments? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I'd like to do a rope. Yeah, I'm just going to do it. Okay. Um, Ms. Harold? No. Ms. Zimmerman? No. Sullivan? No. Dr. Royer? No. Miles? Yes. Mr. Marvin? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Uh, Ms. <clears throat> Ms. Courtney? Yes. Sorry, it doesn't pass. Okay, so. Okay. Doesn't matter. Yep. Patty's not here. Am I correct? And if it is a tie, the motion fails. Yeah. Okay. All right. So. All right. So motion to let me go back here. So the LIU agree, LIU agreement with the health center. Uh, motion to approve is not moving forward. Let's move on to the next item on the agenda, and that is the just for discussion. Is this Cradler scholarship? Yes, sir. It's also Dr. Holtzman. <laughs> sorry. It's been so, going on forever. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. So, so you're quick, Mr. Smith. This is just discussion tonight. What we want to do is we want to get your feeling and gauge your direction and then bring it back at the next board meeting. So that's the goal. Do a really good summary of what the heck this is. Sure, I can try. <laughs> it, it is it is a little bit of a challenging. So um, back in the 1990s, there was a scholarship set up by James uh, Cradler and Judy Payne Cradler. Um, it was a scholarship, though, in the sense that it really was a uh, an interest-free loan to individuals between two different school districts, our district and a district in Virginia, uh, Clark County Public School down there, high school. So what could happen is a student um, could basically borrow money, pay for their college, and then once they're out of college, they have to pay that money back. Again, interest-free. They have not had activity on this since 2013. So I... I don't know if it's the model. I don't know why they have not had activity, but there's been no activity on this scholarship since 2013. So um, what M&T Bank is saying, M&T Bank holds the, the trust for this scholarship through their, um, through their uh, legal representation. They want to go ahead and dissolve the trust. And what they want to do is they want to basically split the proceeds, which is about $70,000, give half to Waynesboro, give half to Clark County. And the idea is that we would then start a true scholarship up, giving at least $1,000 per scholarship per year, but not as a loan, as a true scholarship where you receive the money for higher education. So that's what they're proposing. The slight wrinkle to this, and, and probably this is what has held it up the most. Um, again, our solicitor got involved in this, which was really good because this is a very complex situation. Um, we answered a couple of questions that this would truly be a scholarship. We would not have to do it, treat it like a loan, which which is good. We, I really don't want to go down that process. Um, the real problem to this, though, is the fact that M&T Bank in the agreement um, wants us to hold them harmless and indemnify, excuse me, indemnify them for anything that has happened before 
this event before you know, um, we would take ownership of it, so to speak. Um, we did review this with the solicitor. He did not want that in the language, but he also, I think, would probably agree that they're most likely not going to take that out of their language. But we have asked them twice. Um, they're stating that they will not take it out, that we would have to take it, um, that they would have to leave that in there. Um, is there risk, potential risk? We don't know if there's any risk or not associated with this. There could be some risk. But if somebody comes out from an event 10, 12 years ago and says, that this was not handled correctly with their paying it back with their loan, we would potentially have some risk there. So we, re we really have uh, a couple of choices. One is if we do nothing, m and Bank may continue to hold on to that and just keep doing it, what they're doing, even though there's no activity. Or they could go through the Court of Common Pleas and ask the court to have this disbanded. And if it goes down through that process, obviously it would cost more money, not to us, but it would come out of the funds for the trust and then the court would go through some type of an accounting process. And then whatever funds are left after that process would then be distributed to the two school districts. The last option is if we and Clark County both agree, because we would both have to agree to this, to do this agreement, then they would take those funds and they would split them evenly between the two. But in an essence, though, we would both be assuming whatever potential risk might be out there. What, what in the world would be a risk? I mean, don't they have records of what's been going on since... They, they should have they should have records going all the way back to when this existed when the trust was set up right it, it, I, is there a tremendous risk I, I wouldn't think so but I really don't know I, I truly don't know I have two questions here one is exactly what you're saying the only issue I can think is somebody didn't pay it back which you're never going to get it anyway we would say so that, fine. So yeah that's what we're going to say it's fine the second is why did it stop in 2013 is it m t bank is it us that we didn't request it what happened there i guess no one has requested that you know i'm not sure so we dropped the ball you know school district happened? so i think we want to clarify it's not it's it's not a scholarship it was like a loan Understand. an opportunity to get a right. loan Still, so no interest means, but nobody's taking you know. advantage of it right and that applies to both districts or both you know both school but we entities. can go back and do some of that yeah. research well, i would just tell you that the beneficial fund used to do it that way also okay. they no longer have the repayment trying to get that money back forget it i mean really? it's not worth it you know uh in the well anyway they got it back but it took forever so i i would not want it to be alone but i agree i can't see except for somebody who didn't pay it back i, I just don't we never got our money and it's it's 11 years ago i mean that is gonna why? this is common language when it comes to trust dissolving Okay. So this is the world I live and work in. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't blame m and I think every other institution that's dissolving a trust would have that same language in there. Makes sense. Yeah. So, um, and then in terms of repay, call me a nerd. I actually looked at the original will. Um, it does say the trustee <laughs> shall be relieved of any individual liability for failure to collect loans due and unpaid provided reasonable diligence is used with respect thereto. Essentially says m and is not liable anyways if they don't collect anything. Yeah. Um, so. so in terms of, you know, unpaid or, or risk, I think it's minimal to begin with, but also in terms of language, m and is not going to take it out and I don't blame them because I think everyone else would keep it in. Yeah. Um, I think I have the same questions as to why no usage. I think the Baber question forward is, you know, obviously, I think I'm in. Um, it sounds odd. I don't mean to be denigrating it. 70K is not a lot to MT. So they're moving forward whether we agree to their agreement or not. Um, and so um, I think part of it is do we want them to go through the court process? Or if, you right. know, Virginia is amenable, right. um, would they be in agreement to sign it as well? If they are, my thoughts are we move forward and we don't go to the court of common pleas, which could be a lengthy process. Also a lot of money. Yeah. And the court yeah. fees are going to come out of it. And right. so if we're able to get as much into a scholarship fund, I think that'd be great. I think the question for us and for the district then is this money is probably coming to us one way or the another. We need to have a place to put it. That way we can honor the terms of the scholarship agreement. Um, now, we don't need to turn it into the loan repayment thing, but just so... We need some place to put it that delineates that this is the scholarship money and it's being going to be given out. Um, that's yeah. just my. I mean, my the thought. first thing that comes to my mind would be through Wayback. I mean, and, and establish and establish the scholarship because someone has to someone has to review the applications and set the criteria. In this town, it's Wayback or the Beneficial Fund, and I can tell you the Beneficial Fund doesn't want it. Yeah. Well, I see. So. Just to clarify, because this 
I don't know enough about Wayback. Wayback is a separate entity from the school district, right. correct? Right. right. It can't go to Wayback because unless the school district gives it to Wayback, uh, because be. the, the school district is the beneficiary, it has to come to us. So where else could it go, James? Well, I think we as this, I don't know. That's what I'm asking, but that's what we need to figure out. Okay. But because the money's coming to us first, so unless we can figure out a way to maybe give it to Wayback for that in, in express purpose, but the money has to come to us first. And so whether we then as a school district manage applications and give out the scholarship or we figure out the with our solicitor, the legalese to give it to Wayback for that purpose, but the money's coming here first. Well, have we talked to Virginia? I did contact them, but I didn't receive anything back from them. I'm um, actually one of their, um, someone in their office, one of their guidance counselor offices actually did reach out to one of our guidance counselors, forwarded it to us. I did contact them and told them we have it as a discussion item, but I've not heard back. If you're asking for thoughts, I say we move forward and get the money. Yeah, me too. One of the strangest things I've ever seen. <laughs> a lot of time. Yeah, it has taken a lot of time. That's why, Eric, that's why Dr. Holtzman had to explain it because <laughs> it's lost track. It was a lot of time. Wow. Well, okay. So, um, so I will see that on a future agenda. Okay. And just as a caveat, then I'm going to leave it to Dr. Holtzman and his team. We need to figure out a way to put this money. Well, could we put it? Could we? Could we? For, in order to move forward, could we just go ahead and say, as a board, like, go get the money? Okay. Mm -hmm. And then when the money gets here decide whether it's going to stay as a district scholarship um you know i mean obviously some group has to manage it and we could make a decision at that time i mean i don't think we have to decide ahead of time right because if virginia doesn't agree then we're back to zero anyway You're back to square one again mm -hmm. i agree with you dr warrior because mm -hmm. like like you said this could be a long drawn out process either way it's been 10 years so <laughs> <laughs> doesn't the district have other scholarships we do we have some we have a few scholarships we do uh, they there's all have different lot. criteria okay, there's yeah. not very many yeah. but i can remember a scholarship committee reviewing different things mm -hmm. yeah yeah so i mean this would just be like that that yeah and this would be added to that particular review and that, and no. stay with i mean it would have to be a specific scholarship well, this well they, they oversee them, right? Yeah. How many do we have, would you say? Um, 30? 30 from the school? No. No, no. not from the school. No. Not okay. many. Like, sure. give me an example. Uh, till the Emily Abbott one? Is that? But that's not money. That's not money. Isn't it? <laughs> that's not money. Got it. That one should be. That's in way back. That's way way back. Sure. Managing them. Yeah. So I think there's a yeah there's a difference. So yeah, you have a scholarship committee and they have access and all the applications, but they're still like individual, like Ethan Barnhart's family. They they, they hold on to the money and then yeah, the scholarship Ethan Barnhart's money's in the beneficial fund. Okay. Oh, okay. But but the scholarship committee then has that discussion. So. That's even Okay, so yeah. so the money for this is all about the money though. So so the Mr. Thomas Award, Dr. Sternheim, you're saying that's in way back, or is the money if the money's at the school or the district, where is it? That's Mr. Holtzman. It's no, so it's the uh Miss the Charles Thomas um scholarship fund is is being held by Wayback. Okay, so my question again then, what scholarship do we give where we actually have the money? 
I'm trying to remember what the name should be. I, I, I don't, don't think, think we do. We only have about a I don't think I, we, I, we do. wanted to get I had to go back and review it. We have about $127,000 ballpark that we have for scholarships where we have the funds here and oh. they're distributed out. Okay, like, give me one. I know. Just I, one I need day. to try to find that. <laughs> Maybe that's another ratio. Sorry Maybe they're that. sitting there like this money is. Yeah. Maybe we can put that information in the front okay. end folder. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. it would be, I mean, because I my understanding has always been it's either way back or these outside organization or beneficial fund that I wasn't even aware that the district was holding scholarship right. funding. And I know... <laughs> Unfortunately, there are situations every year that money is just left on the table because like it's a music major who plans on going to a school in Virginia or something like sometimes they're real specific. Yeah. And, this, this one was actually to answer some of the questions. Um, this one was actually relatively generic because okay. I, if I read through the specifics on here, it actually says it's anyone who is in need of financial assistance to obtain an education in the field of their choice beyond public schools. So it's mm -hmm. relatively well. The first part, the purpose of the trust to enable worthy graduates. A oh, worthy graduate. Worthy. Yes. So it has to be a worthy graduate. So if you have the right last name. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thank you. Um, so let's move down to the financial business and we can do one, two, and three. Uh, yes, sir. Um, so we have uh, some property assessment changes. Those come out of the Franklin County Tax Office. We have purchase orders. That's for the food service, the general fund, as well as requisitions. And then finally, we have exonerations. Those are for the older per capita and occupation taxes from J.P. Harris. Okay. Is there a motion to approve financial item, uh, financial business items one, two, and three? Move to approve. Second. Any questions? Sorry, me again. Yes. Why? Why would the Church of Apo uh, uh, the Church of the Apostles ever have to pay taxes? So, um, so what happens in some of these cases, and I, and I don't know specifically that case, I'd have to go research it, but if the property changes hands, even if it's a church, or even if it's a current um, uh, non-tax property, if it changes hands, or let's say maybe they had a change in incorporation, um, during that change process, it actually becomes taxable again. So they actually have to go back to the county and ask for it to be tax-free. Um, so we've seen that happen several times in the community with churches, for example, where another church buys it, and then they or they've changed the structure. Who actually? Yeah, I, I just I, they used, they were paying or assessed six thousand six hundred ninety. Now it's only seventeen fifty. So they they just appealed or somebody appealed it. But I'm right. just wondering why a church would pay taxes. But you don't know. Yeah, That's it could fine. be for a. Um, I was just curious. I, I and and again, I I'm trying to stretch my head here with property tax assessment. I think. Technically, church parking lots can be taxed, but I, I'm not recommending that. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going, recommending going down that path. So, but I, but it could be something. Maybe, maybe it's an outbuilding, or maybe it's something along those lines. Um, I do know that there are some churches in the area that do rent parking lots and things of that nature. And okay. It could be that they're possibly taxing something that is deriving revenue of some sort. But again, luckily the uh, the county tax office takes care of these for us. So. Okay, thanks. Okay. All right, so all those, any, any other questions? For that? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Okay, information items, anything from Clayton Cabin? Dr. Deshaun, do you have anything? I have one thing. I don't think you have anything you wanted to. You know, I just want to, uh, Mr. McDuce here uh, tonight, uh, I just want to, uh, uh, Acknowledge him for being here this evening. We appreciate it. Uh, and, and sometimes what you don't see is go down through a whole list of. I had the opportunity to be in Fayetteville yesterday and just have uh, just the excitement uh, of the school year and, and some of the new. I was able to share and around a couple other places. And actually, uh, at, at Fairview here, I actually was Fairview yesterday a bit and then. Today, a little bit after school, and then I. But uh, it, it's just really great to see uh, ways that we're working on um, uh, for for the school. Thank you. As well as the admin staff, I want to thank Ms. Kuzer for her service as the uh, 
secretary to the superintendent, obviously secretary of the board, you did an outstanding job. Uh, we respect that you decided to return to your former role and you're doing a great job at uh, in child accounting, Nick, I probably can't hear me, but that's okay. Um, so at any rate, thank you and for your, for your years of service, um, but you know, you're here and we know where to find you if we have questions, so thank you. <laughs> Okay, any board comments? Anyone? Wow. Okay, all right. right. <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah, it's early. It's a, it's a quick agenda here. Okay, so let's move down. Uh, so is there a motion to adjourn for this evening? Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.